What's up guys and gals, welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're going to be checking out Slipways. This is probably the third or fourth time I've recorded a video on this game because as I spend more time with it, I learn the game better and it feels like the video that I've previously done is inferior, kind of explaining what's going on. And so now that I've kind of collected my thoughts about this game, the developers have given us access to the beta. They're going to let us play the first 25 years of the game. And what Slipways is, is effectively if you've ever played a 4X game like Stellaris, or if you've ever played a game like EVE Online, or you've played a game like the X series, uh, you know how there's jump gates that connect all the different sectors? Well, you are the guy in charge of the Galactic Federation setting up those warp gates in this game. So you're basically in galactic prehistory. And you need to set up the warp gates in such a way that it facilitates trade and it facilitates the economy. And it takes care of all the people on various planets with the things that they need versus the things that they produce. And this game is like one of those games that's very simple to learn. Like you can learn to play this game so quickly. But at the same time, it's a game that really will have you sitting there for like 10-15 minutes just staring on your turn trying to decide what you'll do even though the game is so simple. And I think that's kind of a rare die to cast. That's kind of a rare mold for a game. So usually what happens is games get more complicated like Hearts of Iron or they get more complicated like Europa Universalis and you sitting there for long periods of time trying to decide what you want to do typically comes from either you not having a full grasp of all the mechanics or not sure what your plays are. This game not the case. It's just purely kind of a brain teaser a lot of the time trying to figure out how you can get a gate to certain locations and get it to kind of like take care of things. But I like that about it actually. I'm not a big fan of games that make me sit there and scratch my head a lot. Usually I hope that games kind of get to the point, but with Slipways I find myself actually really really liking. I've booted this up and I've probably played like eight or nine playthroughs now, each time trying something different just to see what I can get going. And I've recorded videos along the way with my kind of impressions of it over and over and over again. So let's dive on in and I think this time's going to be the time that sticks. Uh, we're going to do a standard run. Inside this beta we only have access to the first 25 years so the game will end and say thank you for playing and you know that's it, but it will be coming out soon. There's five races, so we got to select the Council of Advisors that's helping us as the galactic humans effectively branch out into space and make things happen. They all give you different bonuses to different things. So we have the Vittori. The Vittori are effectively kind of like the Vulcans. They're all about cold logic. They're all about knowledge. They're all about using that knowledge to transcend the physical form and create perfection effectively. Uh, we have the Bakar. The Bakar are all about exploitation and mining and getting everything out that you possibly can in any deal. Uh, we have the Silthid. The Silthid are a bunch of insects that have a telepathic link. Uh, they are all about kind of maximizing efficiency and making sure that all the pistons are firing at the same time. That's all that they care about. So basically logic, uh, we got logic, exploitation, we've got efficiency. These guys down here are all about profit. They are the Ephorians. They're a water creature that lives inside of these suits right here so that they can interface with us. Uh, but anyways, they only care about profit and they really only care about trade. Whatever maximizes trade and profit makes them happy. Uh, we also have the Dender. The Dender are all about just maintaining life in the universe and making it better. These guys are kind of the altruists. Uh, they're one of the oldest races in the universe and they kind of act as advisors to like everybody in keeping the peace and making sure that everyone is pulling in the same direction and that everyone is thriving together. Uh, I'm just going to pick random because I've played this a bunch of times. It looks like we've got the Silthid. It looks like we've got the Vatori, and then we've got these guys right here. I can never remember their name off the top of my head. So anyways, now, we've got our three races. They're going to give us different technologies that we can pick up along the way. Unfortunately, within the context of this beta, it's going to be very difficult to get research done. Uh, with the first 25 years, you're really kind of setting up the foundations of your galactic civilization, and you're not really going to get to research unless it's like in the last seven or eight years. And even then, it's not going to be enough to maybe buy more than one or two researches. But I am interested in playing around with those systems as we start getting access to more developed versions of the game. Uh, every single race comes with perks. We get to pick two of them. Uh, so for the Silthid, it looks like we can go factory builders, so forge word colonization time takes less time, or we can reduce the cost of building structures by 30%. Both of those are pretty good. Uh, we've got the Vatori. Anytime we colonize a planet that produces algae, 
uh, we've got ourselves some free research. We also gain access to additional level 2 technologies, one per race. Uh, my guess would be this is going to be the one that's kind of meta when the game comes out because the technologies are really, really important in this game. Which is why it's such a bummer that I don't get to play around with them, in all honesty. Like, the, the technologies actually really affect how the game plays out, having read through a lot of them. Uh, and then we've got these guys over here. Uh, we've got Reciprocity. Every time you create two-way trade between a new pair of planets, you will get eight credits for free. And then planets receiving goods will get 25% more income. I'm going to go with the 25% more income because the planets that you can get goods to tend to be like your banger planets. Those are the ones that like finance your entire empire. You can't make every single planet perfect in this game. But the ones that are perfect and the ones that like generate profit, I think that 25% bonus is going to matter. And then I'm going to take the bonus to research for algae and then we'll start it off. All right, so here we are. This is the game. Uh, we're going to start out. These are basically sensor blips. Uh, we live inside this black hole right here for whatever reason. Apparently, we got behind on the mortgage or something. They kicked us out of our space station. Now we live in a black hole. We are the spaghetti. Uh, we can actually scan all these planets to figure out what we have around. And in fact, I do highly recommend that you clear out all these planets before you start building because this game really requires you to know what you have in your hand in order to play. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to drag and we're going to put out some probes. So there's probe number one. Probe number one has given us an asteroid, it's given us a jungle planet, and it's given us a uh, Gaia planet, effectively, an Earth-like planet. Uh, we can also fire a probe out to here just to see what we've got. Looks like we've got a mining planet, we've got a forge world, which is where we manufacture stuff, and then we've got another Arctic planet over here. This is actually a pretty solid cell right here. My guess would be that we get humans from here, we send the humans to here to get food, we get the food to come back, then these guys are going to want some bonus stuff like circuitry or robots or something like that. And then we can use this in order to go over to here. I think it's going to be okay. This game is basically all about making polygons that are like perfectly arranged. And when you mess it up, you'll definitely know because you'll like bork the efficiency of like your entire galaxy. Uh, we'll go over here. I'm just going to scan all these for right now. I don't, I, I don't like playing this game blindly. I've learned that when I play blindly, I lose and I play very, very badly. Okay, so we got an ocean planet over here, we've got an earth planet over here, we've got a desert planet over here. We can't do anything with the desert planet right now, but later on when we get access to, like, technologies, we will be able to do something with this. Likewise, there are other planets, like ice balls, that are completely and totally useless right now, but once we have technology, we'll be able to do something with them. On top of that, other races, so for example, the Bakar, the Bakar are all about making these useless planets useful. That's one of the reasons why I typically pick the Bakar as one of my council members, because they allow you to alleviate kind of blockages in your galaxy because we're going to be dragging so like once we colonize we're going to be putting jump gates in between places and there are rules to how those jump gates can be placed and having useless planets in the way while you're on kind of like a glut of colonizing can be like a huge pain in the ass and really kind of like throw a monkey wrench into the whole situation. Uh, we're looking pretty good right now. I, I think we've got most of the things that we need. So my suggestion would be that we make a hive world right here. That's my thought. Uh, the hive world the thing on the left is what they need in order to be prosperous. The thing on the right is what they produce. And so they need grain to be going to this planet. Otherwise, they will all be miserable and upset. And they'll be like, where's the bread at? Dave said there would be bread. Uh, some planets will need humans in order to function. So, for example, we have three options right here. We could say that we could get robots. So if we ship robots here, those robots will produce grain. If we ship humans here, those humans will produce water and they will produce algae. Uh, there's an argument to be made that we should do water and algae. But to get humans out of a jungle planet is kind of a pain in the ass. So I think since this is the first source of population, I think we should make it a hive world. So this little red flag right here, how, do the, how does the game function? So the game functions like this. The entire goal of the game is to try to keep your happiness like above 60%. Every single planet you have that has a little red flag on it, a literal red flag, is draining you by minus 1% happiness per year. And so it's in your best interest to satisfy all their needs. So long as a planet has the input that it needs, nothing else matters. If they have the first input, you're good. Everybody's happy, everybody's pleased, nobody's angry at you. 
But if they don't have that input right there, every single time you pass a turn or every single time you make a play, uh, you're going to take a penalty. So, like, you kind of, like, don't want to open up new planets that have red flags on them sort of willy-nilly. My first couple playthroughs, I was, like, colonizing everything, and I wasn't paying attention to my outputs and my inputs. And I was like, well, I've got so much money. How am I losing? It's because you got to keep people happy. Money is a secondary effect of keeping everybody happy. Over here. I would like to... Ooh, that's going to be complicated. I thought the jungle planet could produce grain a little bit more easily. Ooh, I may have done this wrong. Okay, hold on a second. We can roll everything back. Don't worry about it. We can roll it back. It's going to be fine. So let's say they've got people right there. We're going to have to do this a little bit differently and think outside the box because I have no way to get grain over here. So unless we luck out and one of these two planets right here is a grain producing planet, we're going to be in deep trouble. We can get grain over here provided we can get algae there, but we can't get algae there because this place will produce algae, but there's a planet in the way. So I have no way to get algae over to this planet. So that would be kind of a booby play as well. Let's do it this way. I'm going to get my humans right here. So I have humans. These humans need circuits, and these humans need grain in order to be happy. So I'm going to have this produce the grain that I need, and that's where we'll kind of start off with. This is kind of like a weird starting spot because we don't have access to all the things we need in order to get by. If I can get robots over here, technically, I could make the grain over on this side, but we've already made our decision. So let's take the grain over to here. So there we go. They have one of the two things that they need in order to be happy. Now, we've got to figure out how to get circuits over here. That's going to be the other problem. Then on top of that, we've got to figure out how to get robots to this place so that we're not constantly draining our happiness. So, we have this mining planet right here. I suggest we use it. They only need one input, so we can easily get rid of the minus one right there. And as you can see, it's got a little symbol of a city on top of it now. That means that the planet is established. It has all of the baseline things it needs in order to keep people from being unhappy. However, you'll note that, look, it's added water now as a secondary requirement. That's because every single planet can be tiered up in order to increase its production. So... If this place has people and water, it will produce two of the metals instead of one metal. Then, after that, if we manage to export both of these metals to other places, it'll go up to level three and produce an extra metal with the profits. And if we can allocate that third metal, it'll go up to level four. Level three is doable most of the time with your core world planets. Level four is very difficult and like a very rare thing from what I've seen so far. It's been pretty, it's been pretty rare that I get access to like level four planets, but I've pulled off several level threes in my time. So we need this planet now. We can either produce circuitry, which they want, or we can produce robots, which they want. In either case, the thought process here is, we're only going to be able to negate 1% of this penalty. So we've got to decide who we would rather supply. Now, my argument here would be that we should supply these guys with robots. The reason why is because that creates a circuit in between all of these right here, and it basically closes off this grouping. If I was to make the circuitry and then ship it down to here, these guys would no longer be able to export their grain to this side of the map. They still won't be able to do that if I, if I do it the other way, but like... It just seems to me that keeping everything neat and orderly is the best plan for right now. If we make this produce robots, actually, we can make them happy and we can colonize this. That's definitely an option. Then we could supply water over here. Let's do that. That feels like the best play here. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to take this planet right here. We're going to tell it to produce robots. We're going to move the metal over. The metal has been moved. We are now getting two robots. We can put the robot over here. This is now a developed planet, so that's good. That's all ready to rock. Hopefully something on this side right here uses grain. If something on this side right here uses grain, we are absolutely golden. If nothing on this side over here uses grain, um, it's going to suck. It's going to be bad for us. Uh, over here, we have another robot, so what I'd like to do is make a thawing facility on this arctic planet. We'll ship the robots over to here. They will produce the water that will then make this place into a much nicer location, which is now producing another metal. So that's good. Uh, we've got them all set up, and we've got our negatives down to minus 1%, which is great. That's fantastic. I've found after playing the game like 10 or 15 times, you're usually going to either have a zero or a minus one. And you really just kind of want to keep it right there and see how far into the game you can get. In a certain level, this game is almost like a planetary colonization economic roguelite. I don't really know what else to say because like when you tank it, the game is over and there's permadeath and you start over from scratch with a new galaxy. Um, 
you know, the, the element is there. It's there. Uh, we've got missions from some of our council members. Increase total production of robots by three units. Okay, we'll get some extra options in, in like future events. Improve my yearly science output by three. We could do an import hub right here. Establish one more import hub. Planets receiving three imports. We have to pick two out of the three of these. I think it's possible that we can increase robot production if we can get the if we can get circuits over to here. I think that's definitely doable. And then I think the science output is doable as well. Although those might kind of be long-term goals. And as you can see, it's added those over here. Uh, you can build stations. This is like a research lab right here. Basically, if you give it people and then you give it access to a resource, they will study it and it will generate science. Ideally, uh, you want it to have like three inputs of the thing you're studying, not just one. Otherwise, it's kind of a waste of time. But, you know, it's got a high upkeep. We can make it happen. And at this point, I think our best play is probably to start probing. That's my thought. I have no idea in hell how I'm going to get circuits to this planet. Oh, we have a remnant planet right here. Oh, dude, we're golden. Never mind, we've got a two-way trade right here. Boink. There you go, we fixed it. Yay, everyone's happy. And as you can see, when you get it to a 0%, it actually bumps up your happiness like all over the galaxy. So we've got an extra circuit right there, too. I, I thought that was a desert planet. I didn't realize that it was a scavenger planet. And I think I can get water down to here, too. Very nice, dude. Very nice. Okay, perfect. Absolutely great. Uh, we need to find a place for these water exports to go, and I really wish that I could get a circuit over to here, but we can't cross the slipways. Uh, let's see what we've got over on this side. We're generating profit now, which is really, really good. Uh, we've got another remnant planet right here, which is pretty badass, but we have to supply it with humans, otherwise it's going to be upset with us. So, we're going to have to figure that out along the way. Uh, I just need circuits to go to here. That's all that really matters, because then we can get our robot production up. It doesn't retroactively count your robot production. Kind of a bummer there, but, like, I get it. It's a balance mechanism. Uh, let's throw this over to here. I'm not going to build anything, because the second I build something, we're going to have negatives to our galactic happiness. And so, like, really for right now, I just like to scan around and figure out what's out there. Uh, so we'll throw that over there. Just give me some pieces to play with on the board. I suppose I could have supplied water from over on this side, too. But I have no way to get people over to here, unless we take this Gaia world over here. Yeah, and I have no way to supply food to there. So really, as you can see, the game rapidly kind of devolves sometimes into you just kind of pushing your one percenters further and further out from your core worlds as you solve problems for the interior worlds. It, it's, a, it's a thing that I've run into. Um, and it's a thing that I've learned to look for now after playing the game quite a bit. Normally I do first impressions of stuff, but this game I've actually dumped some time into. Uh, over here with this Arctic planet, I can't really do much with that. Um, if I can get circuits over to here, I'll get a robot that I can send over to here, and that'll give us a few more options. That's an ice ball, so we flat out can't do anything with that right now. Okay. Well, we can only fo we can only fire probes so far. Yeah. So we've got another useless lava planet down here. Later on, we can do stuff with the lava planets, but right now we can't do anything with them. They're kind of just like these things that we stub our toe on. I think... I don't think that I can get a slipway right there. That might be too far. However, I do have extra circuitry over here. I don't have any way to supply food on this side. But I'm going to YOLO it, and we'll just see what happens, because I need access to more planets if I'm going to make this work. Uh, fire out a couple of probes and just see what we have around here. That right there, um, if we plant humans on this, so if I was to take my humans from here and put them to right there, it'll generate research for us. And it'll give us like a little event that we have to resolve. This may have been a mistake, but here, have some circuits. And as you can see, this place just leveled up to level 3. Level 3 is usually pretty easy to pull off. Like, level level 4 is the one that's really going to have you scratch in your head. And they want me to export a circuit to another spot in order to get that done. This asteroid is in the way. 
I like to leave asteroids because later on you can colonize asteroids and you can force the asteroid, if it has access to manpower, to produce pretty much any resource that you want. So I think that like the new player's folly in this game is to basically destroy all the asteroids because you get six credits for every planet that the asteroid is attached to. Uh, and you can get like a fast infusion of cash. But in the long play, I've found it's better to leave the asteroids where they are so that you can get level four planets. So for example, if I can plant something right here that requires circuitry and a human in order to function, then this will go up to a level four. And then we'll get that fat 25% bonus that I was talking about at the beginning of the game. And so anyways, we've got our circuits right there. That's fine. I'm going to need food and I'm going to need food like badly. Unfortunately, I don't have access to food on this side, so this may have been a bad call. Like, this thing may actually be kind of the downfall of my empire as I seek out to kind of resolve its issues, because there's no food to be found. We may be better off... Oh, it's too late. Okay, it's already been done. Fair enough. You can only roll back the last thing that you did. Gotcha. All right. Well, that's fine. That's fine. That's my fault. Um, Grain. Where can we get some grain from? That is imperfect, but if there's a planet around here that can supply it with algae, it'll work. Oof. Can I actually get a gate over here? Is that too far? Okay, I can get a gate over here. Let's let's do it. I'm going to take a I'm going to take a long shot on this one. And as you can see, I'm pushing my problems out to the edge of the empire, as the Romans did before me. Um, let's see here. Oh, that's bad. That's real bad. Okay, this planet is uh, in trouble. That's really, really bad. Feels terrible. Okay, um, I can not get. I can't get algae from an ocean planet. Oof. I may have just hosed myself. You would think one could get algae from an ocean planet. Yep, I've hosed myself. I'm in trouble. I'm in big trouble. Okay, so this thing's going to be a problem. This place is going to be a pain in the ass to resolve. On the plus side, I can upgrade that to a level 3 like right now. And so we produce metal right there. The metal becomes goods. And then we take humans to here. We take metal to here. We take that to there. And voila! Another level 3 planet. It'll help us kind of like negate the... Uh, if we can get another planet up to level 3, it'll negate the penalty for this planet sucking. So, as with all things, you know, the underproductive areas are kind of subsidized by the productive areas. It is what it is. It's how countries function. Um, let's see here. So, from this scavenger plant, I'm going to need humans first before I do any of this. I can put humans right there. And if I can get this to produce the recycling operation, I think that'll be okay. Now we've got more robots being produced. I send humans to here. That gives them the circuitry that they need from the increased production. We're down to a minus 2% right now, which is always a scary thing, but it's going to be okay. It's going to work out. I can fix all this. I can fix all this. I know I can fix it. I know I can fix it. All right, if I can get humans over to here, we get algae and we get water. If I can get algae over to here, it'll produce grain. So I think that's our play. So we move that over to there. And then we get the algae over to here. We get that over to there. And then we take the water. No! Okay, so I don't have enough for the water right now. What do they need to hit level 3? Let's see here. Level 3 plus, it will double up. And it needs more import routes. Okay, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna need that to function, so, like, I, I need the extra water so it'll supply these people and take them up to level 3 so that we can negate this penalty right here. So, I may make some unnecessary imports to this place. Yeah, so they're importing humans right now. I don't know if the import has to be something that they're requesting or if it can be, like, anything. If it can be like anything, this gets a lot easier. If it cannot be anything, then we've got more issues. But, you know, I've lived my whole life with issues. You'll be fine. It'll work out. All right, so another year has passed. We've increased our robot production a little bit. A little itsy-bitsy tiny bit. Uh, what can I research with this? Can I research robots? I can research robots. I have an extra robot right here. Hmm... So that goes right there. We put a human in it. We put a robot in it. 
and that goes up to like the next level of prosperity, which got rid of one of our 1%, so that's good. That's a plus. I don't love the fact that this planet has trapped in the export of metals from right there, but as far as I can tell, they can't export those metals anywhere anyway, so who cares? Um, what other prevailing issues are in front of us? We're actually in a pretty good spot right now. We're in a pretty decent spot. I think... If I can get circuitry to them... I can? Oh, I didn't realize I could get circuitry right there. Nice, dude. Okay, yeah, throw some circuitry over there. They need to export these goods somewhere in order to make them happy. And I think we can negate the penalty for this bad planet decision over here just by getting a couple more planets up to level 3. Uh, let me throw that out to right there and just kind of see what's around. So, if we can get robots over to here, we get grain. If we send metals over to here, we can get humans, so long as we can get grain over here too. Pretty sure we can produce grain from algae right there, but the question becomes, where am I going to get the algae from? Nowhere. Okay, so that's not an option. That's just flatly out of the equation. Now, over here... If I get a robot to there, I can get grain. Hmm. I mean, I could use... I don't have a Forge World. Never. Yeah, I don't... No, I have a Remnant Planet, so I can scavenge robots here. I need humans, though. I need humans. Okay. Well, let's kind of pan around a little bit. I have a big habit in this game of, like, running into a stopgap with my grid and then just being kind of like, eh, I'll worry about it later. And then I just never come back. I just develop in a different direction and hope for the best. Uh, let's see. They still want goods over here. I don't really have any place to get goods from. My suggestion would be... Yeah, I need goods. If I can get them up to another level, they'll get another human being, and then I can use the humans to scavenge a robot here and then put a robot on that so that we get two research per cycle instead. And that is when you're moving at a full clip. Okay. Well, they want grain over here, so that's easy satisfaction right there. We've already fixed that off, and this gone up to level three, so that's great. They've got an extra grain to play around with, but, like, do I need the grainies? right now? No, I do not. Actually, the real problem we seem to be running into is that I need more goods. Pretty much everywhere that's supplying the things that I need right now needs more goods. I can send humans over here pretty easily. So I think this is a pretty easy acquisition. It'll give us metal, but I don't know what we're going to use the metal for. There's no forge world over here, and metal is kind of not that useful unless you have a forge world around. Yeah, lots of metals, so I may just abandon this little planet in the middle, and I might abandon this one, too. Just so I can get after this one over here, possibly. Well, they can scavenge robots. That'll work. Send a human over here to scavenge robots. Oh, nice. Cool. We increased our robot production. Sweet. Nice. Apparently, they're happy with me right now. Good. I don't, I don't like it when clicky-clacky bug races are angry at me. It makes me feel unsettled. Uh, we can get algae, and we can get water from right there. I think that feels like a, a solid play, because then I can send... I mean, it doesn't really do anything but generate profit, but I do feel like it's a it's a decent plan, and it supplies them with water so that they're good to go. It also extends us out over here so we can figure out what we want to do with this side. There's a forge world, so we found a forge world finally. There's also a forge world right there. None of the things in this area need a forge world, though, so like, eh. Like, where I need goods is over here, and so I need one of these to be like a Forge World. Unfortunately, none of them are Forge Worlds. Lame. My budget just came through. That's good, so we've got lots of money to play around with, but I feel like we've kind of hit the end of the road up here. I mean, I can keep extending it out and making level 2 planets pretty much indefinitely, which is fine, I guess. Um, I'm just kind of bummed out that I can't get this guy to level 3, and I'm kind of bummed out that I can't get this guy to level 3, and I really, really, really want to get, like, one of these planets to level 4 while we play. Level 4s are really cool. They make me happy. Uh, but we don't really have any locations that can do that for us. 
This place can produce water if I can get humans to it. Unfortunately, to get humans to it, I need metal, which I can get, and I need grain, which I can't get. Yeah. Hmm. All these desert and water planets, dude. They are really messing with my plans right now. I have no way to get humans down there. So yeah, no matter what I'm going to do, I'm going to have to take a negative for our for our galactic civilization here that we're spreading out all over the place. But this is Slipways. I've actually enjoyed this game tremendously. I did not expect to like this game. I'm not super into, like, cerebral deep thought games. Normally I'm looking for more, like, beer and pretzels type games or things I can play rapidly. But this game kind of combines that idea. Like, I love the fact that you can play this game in about 35 minutes. You know what I mean? And then, like, be done with it and then start a new one and then try something different. Like, I think they're onto something here because I am not the target audience for these kinds of games. And yet, I am utterly enamored with this game. I like it a lot. Like, I've really been enjoying it. It's pretty rare that I boot up a game that I've done, like, impressions on and whatnot and really dump some time into it, just, like, eating at the back of my mind. And that's exactly what happened with this game. Uh, this game definitely kind of got into the back of my head, and I was like, I want to do another run of that game. So I'm excited about the final release. The beta is very fun. Uh, my name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so you don't have to. Today up on the chopping block, we had slipways. Tomorrow will likely be something else. See y'all later. Bye, everybody.